As far as the men goes, I haven't had much to say because I don't, I don't particularly care. And the reason why I don't particularly care is because I think UConn is so dominant. I'll be happy if I got competitive competition. You see, I was watching the game last week when the score between UConn and Illinois was tied 23-23 with a couple of minutes left in the first half. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to the bathroom, took a leak. Passed gas after I departed from the bathroom. Went downstairs and got some, me- uh, some, some food for my sister. Went in front of the TV. It was 53-23. UConn had gone on a 30 to nothing run. Ladies and gentlemen, UConn is shooting 28% from three-point range, and they're still going up 30. Ladies and gentlemen, they've played since the Sweet 16 like 320 plus minutes. Do you know they've trailed for five minutes and 50 seconds? Do you know that in their last eight NCAA tournament games, UConn hasn't trailed in the entire second half of any game? This is the level of dominance that we're talking about. And when that happens, I'm sorry. It gets a bit boring. That also has contributed to watching the women because their competition has been competitive. Now, Tennessee Purdue is competitive. And Zach Eady, player of the year last year, probably going to be player of the year this year. I'm not knocking him. Good kid, I'm sure, going at Purdue. Ladies and gentlemen, he's 7'4". He looks like a foot taller than everybody that's going up against him. He does look a bit stiff at his size. I don't see him truly excelling on a pro level. When you look at Klingon for UConn, he seems to have more athleticism than Zach Eady, but Zach Eady's so damn big, he's averaging 30 and 16 in the tournament. I get it. I can't see him dropping 40 and 16 like he did against Tennessee. I can't see him doing that to UConn, though. First order of business, though, you got to beat NC State, who came into the ACC tournament losing basketball games, struggling miserably, And then went on a run, won the ACC tournament, and now they've advanced to the Final Four. And this kid, Burns Jr., I love him. Moxie, tough, um, basketball IQ, skilled. He's like Nikola Jokic, can't jump onto a curb to save his life. He has has no athleticism, but my God, he can play. And it's going to be real interesting to see what he does against somebody like Edie because Edie's so much bigger than him. So we'll have to wait and see what the deal is. We really, really might, and we'll have to go that route. But I still think Purdue, with their size and their ability to hit three-point shots, I think NC State has pulled off a lot by getting it this far. Congratulations to them for the season that they have had. But I think they're going to beat NC State, and if I'm being totally honest with you, I want them to because I think the closest thing we could have to a competitive national championship game against Utah is Purdue beating NC State, because I don't think NC State would have much of a chance against UConn. As it pertains, and and by the way, Klingon, the the, the guy that I brought up, the big man for UConn, do you know on shots he contested against Illinois, they were 0 for 19? 0 for 19. They didn't make one shot where he got to contest it. That's what we're talking about here. And oh, by the way, they play Alabama. Mark Sears, remember his name, for Alabama, averages 24 in the tournament. Shooting like 52, 53% from the field, about 45% from three point range. He's their only hope. Now, Alabama is one of the leading offenses, the leading offense in the nation, averaging better than 90 points. They jack up more, more threes than most teams in, in college basketball with about, you know, shooting 37% from, from beyond the arc. Their only shot at beating UConn is to hit shots from the perimeter and push the ball up the floor and create easy baskets on a fast break. They have no other shot of winning this game. UConn is just that dominant. And Danny Hurley is about to put himself in the category as one of the great, great coaches of all time. And UConn, over the last 30 years, there's no blue blood program better than theirs. Not Duke, not North Carolina, not Kentucky, not UCLA, not Kansas, none of them. So let me just get that out of the way. 